ahead and get started here. Thank you, first of all, for spending this hour with us. We know that this time of the year can be very busy, and we appreciate you choosing to spend your time with us. I'm Shannon Clifford, and I'm the Executive Director of the Mesa Verde Foundation. In this season of caring, I want to thank you, our supporters, for helping us to care for Mesa Verde National Park and its treasures. I would also like to take this opportunity to introduce Monica Buckle. Monica is a member of our board of directors and the volunteer moderator for our webinar series. She will be guiding us through our webinar today. Welcome, Monica. Well, thank you, Shannon. It's so nice to cap off 2023 with this wonderful webinar presentation. And thank you all, as Shannon had stated, for taking time out of your schedules. I know there's so many functions and events going on, but we're very grateful for all your support and tuning in and also those who tune into our YouTube link as well. And I just hope everyone has a lovely holiday season and wishing people much abundance for the new year. Cecilia Shields is the Supervisory Ranger of Interpretation and Education at Mesa Verde National Park. She will present Connecting Indigenous Youth and Mesa Verde National Park through Mesa Verde's Indigenous Ranger Internship Program. Cecilia has a very special guest today joining her, and that's Jordan Fragua, an Indigenous Ranger who is affiliated with Picaris Pueblo and Oke Owinge. Very special presentation indeed. Mesa Verde National Park is in its second year of hosting an Indigenous Ranger internship program. Through an agreement with Ancestral Lands Conservation Corps, the Indigenous Ranger internship program brings young Native American people to work alongside National Park Service Rangers and share their own insights and connections to Mesa Verde. The program helps to amplify the voices of Native interns and to transform the tone and content of Mesa Verde interpretation. Before we proceed with the webinar, I would like to make mention that the Mesa Verde Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit partner to the Mesa Verde National Park. We solely rely on donations and the generosity of viewers and foundation members like you. With that said, there is still time to make a tax-deductible year-end donation to the Mesa Verde Foundation, and Alpine Bank is matching up to $5,000 in donations made to our year-end campaign. This means that donations of any amount will go further. Anyone interested in making a tax-deductible gift can do so on the Foundation's website or by calling the Foundation. The website and contact information is posted in the chat box. Lastly, with utmost gratitude, I would like to give a special thank you to the park superintendent, Casey Cook Collins for her invaluable support, as well as Mesa Verde Foundation's board chair, Jana Leslie. Now, circling back to today's presenter, Cecilia Shields is a supervisory park ranger for interpretation and education at the park. She is from a small pueblo in northern New Mexico called Picaris. She is also part Okeowinge and Mescalero Apache. Cecilia has 20 years of experience with the National Park Service. She spent 10 years at Bandelier National Monument and 10 years at the Flagstaff Area National Monuments as well. Cecilia took a three-year break in service to work with the pueblo of Picaris on a variety of projects and then returned to the National Park Service in April of 2023. It's incredible work that Cecilia is spearheading with the National Park, and what better way to get the webinar started than to welcome Cecilia to the presentation. Also, please note, we'll take questions at the end. Thank you. Cecilia, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. <laughs> Yes, well, thank you for taking time out. I can see everyone's talking about weather. That seems to be all the buzz. So I don't know what the weather's like at the park right now. Well, I've been in my office all day, so <laughs> it looks kind of a little cloudy, but um, it's, it's not doing anything right now. So it's going to wait for me to do anything till I get home. But. All right. Well, thank you so much. 
Sure, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thanks for the invitation and the opportunity to talk about this really great program um, and talk about the indigenous rangers. And I'm very excited to, to talk further and to share information and um, hopefully give you a little bit of insight into the program um, and happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, but I am really excited that I, I reached out to um, our indigenous interns who were here for the summer. And um, thankfully, Jordan was able to join us today. Um, our other interns are in their finals week. So they are either cramming or they're just starting to relax after long days of tests. And so we wish them well. Um, they send their best and um, they're definitely very excited and um, very proud to have represented as indigenous rangers over the, over the summer. Um, but, but Jordan is joining me this afternoon and I'm very thankful to you um, for doing so. And as part of the Indigenous um, Ranger program and something that sets this aside from a lot of other things we do is really continuing that connection to our cultural heritage and to who we are and to the place that we're in because Mesa Verde plays such an important role to us spiritually and ancestrally that um, we don't just come here to work and do things lightly. We take it very seriously and it is a very sacred place. And with that, um, I have asked Jordan already if he would open us up with the prayer, which is what we always do um, to acknowledge our ancestors and this special place that we're at um, and for allowing us to, to share in the work and to um, help talk about our ancestors as well as our continuing our culture today. So Jordan, if you wouldn't mind um, also introducing yourself and then opening us up and then we'll go from there. Yeah, cool. All right, yeah, for sure. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Hope everyone's doing good. Uh, thank you, Monica and Cecilia for setting this up and for getting us going. But yeah, my name is Jordan Frawa. I come from the Pueblos of Picaris and Okiwenge. Uh, I was part of the Indigenous Internship Program for the past season and I was really excited to be there. Uh, but yeah, uh, as, like, uh, as Cecilia mentioned too, we always open up with prayers because as we as indigenous folks know, Mesa Verde is more than just the buildings. They're where our spirits live. And for a lot of us too, we still have those connections. And so uh, whatever we do, whatever we talk about, we always start with this first. So with that being said, uh, so thank you for let me start off with that. Uh, pass it back on to Cecilia. Thank you, Jordan. Um, that that's how we open things up. Um, it's a thank you and a recognition of where we're at and and all things um, that are here within this place and all the things that are here that are good. So he mentioned a lot of the different animals and he mentioned some of the some of the special places and the special deities. And he said that all things green are good, all things red are good, all things that shine, are shiny are good. And he just asked for strength and for giving us what we need so that we can present to you and give you the information um, to do a good job on on um, presenting this stuff. So I'm going to share my screen and hopefully he added in a prayer about technology. So, okay, and let me get my... All right, so hopefully you are seeing my PowerPoint presentation here. Yes, um, that's beautiful. Great. All right. So the so our presentation is about talking about the Indigenous Ranger program here at Mesa Verde National Park. 
Um, I'm not sure if other national parks or other national park service sites are doing something similar, but um, this program um, was started last summer and uh, through, through some um, grant funding and through some different opportunities with the Mesa Verde Foundation as well to, to bring young indigenous people into the park to learn how to do interpretive programs and to share with the public. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the program today and just really share with you um, more about the program and then focus on our 2023 season and kind of um, learn a little bit about what some of our rangers did this summer. Um, so throughout the summer, the Indigenous Ranger program is really focused on bringing young people to work side by side with Park Service rangers and do a lot of the same activities that we do. So offering programs, um, leading guided tours, working at the visitor centers, um, working on different projects throughout the park and really learning about the role of the National Park Service, as well as them bringing their own connections to this place um, because they have such insight as far as looking at sites more than just architecture, but really talking about the culture itself and bringing it to life and sharing some of that indigenous knowledge um, it's been it's such a great opportunity to share that with people from all over the globe um, that come to visit Mesa Verde, you know, throughout the, especially in the summer months when we're very busy. Um, and so this is just a great opportunity to also give some new skills to our rangers so that they learn how to do public speaking, they learn how to, you know, work on time management, work on different projects, um, utilize some of their skills as they go to college and learn different activities. So um, this is one of our indigenous rangers over the summer leading a guided tour through Cliff Palace. And they did it all. They, they did just what those of us in the green and gray um, uniform did. They were doing the same thing. And um, they, were, they were really great at it. They were pretty remarkable as you'll learn as we go through this, um, through this presenta presentation. They also did projects like helping with um, setting up signage and, you know, making sure our trails were ready for, for visitors. So this is one of our other indigenous rangers, Davin, who was putting up a exit only sign out at Balcony House. So they were, they were doing other projects as well. Um, and they also had some fun sometimes um, while they were working. So this is a photograph of, they were working on a film project and um, they were practicing their their lines and um, kind of rehearsing and going through that and kind of getting used to looking at in front of a camera to to do some talking. So they they were exposed to a lot of different um, activities and different opportunities that that rangers go through throughout the year. So for our 2023 season, we had four indigenous rangers. And so we'd like to introduce you to them. Um, so First is Ian Bautaki, who is from Zuni, who is from Zuni Pueblo. Um, and Ian is a, currently a student right now at um, Arizona in Arizona and Flagstaff at NAU. So he's there studying, um, and like I said, probably in the midst of finals this week. And so he was our youngest Indigenous Ranger. Um, he came to us at 19 years old. But I can tell you, if any of you have been on his tours, he he speaks very much like he is a, a true elder. So he has a lot of knowledge, a lot of um, respect for the for the ancestral sites, and um, and has learned a lot and grown a lot. Um, especially as a young nineteen year old, um, he he learned a lot, and um, but he brought a lot of that experience and respect for cultural sites. So that's Ian. And next we have Jordan. Um, who is here with us today, and um, he can tell you a little bit more about their own experiences and what he experienced over the summer. So I'll let him talk a little bit more about himself. Um, but Jordan is from Picaris as well as Oke Winge. Then we have Mr. Um, Satchel Martin, who um, represents the Hopi tribe. And Satchel is a, currently a student at Fort Lewis here in Durango. And um, he is definitely in in finals week for sure. So um, he 
he started actually last summer. So this would be been his second season now in 2023. Um, and he definitely served as that mentor and like a big brother to our interns and um, very well spoken, uh, very, very knowledgeable. Um, and he is currently really interested in geology and um, seeking his degree in natural um, in environmental science. And last, we had Mr. David Nez from the Navajo Nation, who was with us through um, the last part of October. So he was one of our longer um, indigenous rangers that was here. And David really brought a, a unique perspective in that he he um, didn't know he was signing up to be in the public eye a lot. Um, he thought he was going to be a interpreter, meaning t translating things from English into Navajo. Um, but when he got here and realized he was going to be doing tours multiple times a day to hundreds of people a day, it was a little um, nerve wracking for him. But I, he definitely overcame that very quickly. And he became a natural and he is definitely a natural interpreter um, speaking to hundreds of people um, when not a problem at all. So um, Mr. Nez did a, did a great job as all of our interns did. Um, so those were our four indigenous intern rangers that we had in 2023. So with that, um, some of the things that they did, I uh, kind of made a list and um, tell you a little bit about some of those things. And Jordan, please feel free to jump in at any time if you'd like. Um, but they, they all four participated in our seasonal training. So they, they got a lot of hands-on training and in, in interpretation and in safety, emergency um, operations and um, first aid. They learned how to operate um, the, the different buildings, how to have alarm code, you know, all the things that go with seasonal trainings. They read a lot, they, they studied. So they did a lot of work as far as um, training goes, first getting on to, into, the, um, into the role of being an Indigenous Ranger. And these were things they were doing right alongside the Park Service Rangers. So they were all working together, sharing ideas. And, and you know, our seasoned National Park Service Rangers were giving them advice on what, you know, what to expect, help, helping them create their programs, where the best places to stop are, um, and meanwhile, our indigenous interns were helping to teach our rangers as well, cultural sensitivity things and, you know, how to handle certain questions. And, um, and so it was really neat to see that collaboration between Park Service rangers and our indigenous rangers. Um, they also created and presented a variety of interpretive tours and programs. And some of the tours that they, they created their own programs and they presented them. So they did Cliff Palace tours, balcony house tours, square tower house tours, spruce tree house talks. Even, they each developed their own evening programs. And so they presented those. And I did a rough estimate a little bit earlier um, on their numbers on what, how many programs they did. And just based off like initial um, schedules we had, I, I estimate that they presented um, just about 370 um, interpretive programs, and they reached over 16,560 visitors. And those are just the ones we know they did. There were some times they had to, you know, help and pick up a new program, or there was a special program that came in. So they were, they were doing a lot of programs, and um, they, they definitely had an impact on the public, which you'll see a little bit later. Um, they also worked in visitor operations. And that means they operated the visitor center, the museum opening and closing. They staffed those areas. Um, they handled and worked with multiple junior rangers. Um, and that's working with them on going through their booklets, ensuring that our junior rangers had a meaningful experience and had any questions answered. Um, they answered general visitor questions from everything from where are the restrooms to more intense questions about where did the people get their water to why did they leave? So they answered a lot of different questions. And, you know, these questions can get, they're a little different if you're, um, a, you know, from not from the indigenous communities. Um, 
when you are indigenous, some of those questions can be a little offensive sometimes. So I know a lot of them, you know, having to work with them and help them um, understand, you know, visitors don't necessarily have that ill intent. They rather, you know, it's an opportunity to help educate them. So um, I know there were some questions sometimes that would be, you know, visitors kind of disappointed that, you know, our rangers didn't have real Indian names, quote unquote, or, you know, they, questions like that. And so, you know, just working with them to help them understand that it's an opportunity to help educate and bring um, further insight and, you know, leave have both sides understanding, um, you know, the very different array of questions that we get. Um, they also rode trails. Um, they worked on a on a virtual tour of Cliff Palace, which is currently live. Um, something that I highly recommend you take some time, you know, after after this presentation or you know over the next few weeks to look at that. It's it was done by SciArc. Um, I'll, I'll show you a photo here in a in a little bit. Um, you can find it on our web page under the multimedia tab, um, and it's. You know, our three indigenous rangers um, participated and they they gave their own insight into this virtual tour along with our archaeologist to kind of to talk about these um, to talk about Cliff Palace and give more of a different insight into that into that site. Um, so that's the virtual tour. They assisted with temporary exhibits. So if you come to the museum, you take a walk through, you'll see some of the quotes from Ian, from Satchel, um, from some of our other Indigenous interns and kind of their perspectives. And as we work to to um, upgrade and redesign our, our museum exhibits, we have more modern Native voices in there and they're included in that. Um, they participated in a storytelling workshop, which was really pretty neat. So they learned, you know, from some professional storytellers on how to tell stories and how to tell their own stories and to um, to work with that. And it was really a really nice experience to watch them go through that and learn uh, because we are a people of stories um, and for them to have that workshop really directed to them and giving them and empowering them to tell their own stories was really powerful. And um, that uh, we hope to continue in that model and have that opportunity for more of our indigenous rangers in the future to continue to learn that process of telling their stories and owning their, their own story. Um, they also assisted with the with the current museum redesign. So, you know, as the as our interpretive division is working to help and work on new exhibits, our indigenous interns played a vital role in attending some of the meetings with our other um, indigenous committees and advisory groups to to offer their own insights as well. Because our indigenous rangers are here on the front line, they know how visitors interact with the museum, they know what questions people ask. And so they provided a really great insight into what the new exhibits will look like. And um, I, I'm very excited for that because it gave them an opportunity to share their own story and their own voice. Um, we also worked with a variety of tribal groups. So when every time we had a tribal group come in, if we could, and we had the indigenous rangers, available, they would go out with these communities and talk to them, which was really great because as you saw from the photos of our crew, um, they're they're young. And so they're like I always say, they're, st they're still considered cool by the younger kids. And so um, they, a lot of the groups that came in were young, young people. And so they were able to talk to them on their level, share with them and they had really powerful exchanges. And then with our elders coming with them, they also were given information and insight and you know, given offered prayers as well for them to continue their work that they're doing. So pretty powerful stuff when working with these tribal groups and with the indigenous interns, it was pretty remarkable to see and to watch those interactions. Um, they also assisted with natural resources on a project along the Mancos River. And they really enjoyed this project. Um, they were working with natural resources on um, 
uh, as they like to say, they were beavers for the day. So they were working on a project for building um, some dams and working along the Mancos River. So they got to get dirty and wet, and um, that was pretty exciting for all of them. Um, and they really enjoyed that a lot. So we worked to try to get them with different um, other divisions within our park so they can see different opportunities that were available. Um, they also assisted with, or attended backcountry tours with cultural resources. So cultural resources, the different archeologists went out into different areas and always invited the indigenous interns along. So they got to see new places and they got to experience new sites. And um, that was powerful for them as well. And one of the most powerful things I saw throughout the summer as I worked with them was when we went to one of the sites with our archeologists and we, um, all of our indigenous rangers were still very new to each other. So they weren't, you know, they hadn't really bonded yet. And, um, but at that site, they all um, did their, their prayers together and they all left their own offerings. And that was one of the first moments they all came together as a group and just acknowledged the place they were in. And that was really powerful and really, really neat to see. Um, and then to be able to be there with the archaeologists was really great because they got to ask questions and um, they also got to offer their own insight to the archaeologists as well. So that was really neat. Um, they also, um, as our, our in, a couple of our interns left to go back to school, um, David and Jordan stayed a little bit longer into the season um, and then they helped out with education programs. And so um, they went from doing public tours to going into the classrooms. So they, um, Jordan worked specifically and went into classrooms and did um, presentations and they did um, hosted field trips back to the park. And they also hosted some library programs in Dolores, Mancos and, um, and in their libraries, they offered some different programming there. They all um, took part in night sky training and were, were learning how to use the, 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 the telescopes and learn how to tell nighttime stories. And that was really neat too. And then of course we had the big eclipse in October and um, two of our interns were definitely tied to that um, event. And they did everything from parking cars to leading interpretive programs to handing out safety glasses. So they were definitely both busy over the course of the eclipse. And then, um, then in November, we had Native American Heritage Month. And so Jordan really helped out with that and really helped to lead the way to ensure that we did something for Native American Heritage Month. And boy, did we ever. So we did a lot. Um, we did the Rock Your Mocks campaign. We did the Red Shawl Day. And then the big one was we honored all 26 associated tribes with the social media post every day of the month. Um, and so hopefully you guys got to see that. And um, it was a really, it was really ambitious thing to do, but we did it and it was really great. And thanks to some of our staff and to um, Jordan for really putting the layout together and how it was gonna work. Um, it, it really came together very well. And I think it was a really unique way to honor our communities because they're all different. And that was the, really the goal there. So that is just kind of a rundown on what they did over the course of the 2023 season. Um, they did a lot. They, they made huge impacts and things you can still see today. So um, with that, um, I mentioned the SciArc virtual tour of Cliff Palace. It's currently up and posted on our web page. Um, and this is what you'll see if you bring up the multimedia page. Um, you'll see the Cliff Palace and you'll see Satchel there in the um, smiling happily at Cliff Palace, but that's the virtual tour. And it's really a neat um, opportunity for different voices to talk about um, Cliff Palace. And um, here's a sort of just a screenshot of what the, what the, um, the virtual tour kind of looks like. Um, and I kind of blew it up so you could see the the three indigenous rangers down in the corner that are um, represented and that are talking on this um, virtual tour along with the park archeologist. Um, and so 
definitely check it out. Go go in there, kind of explore. You know, um, it gives a great opportunity because a lot of people, you know, always ask what's beyond what what we can see on the tour. This really gives you a great insight. And it gives you the archaeologist perspective as well as our indigenous rangers perspective on this place as well. So um, definitely check it out um, and you can get to it from our park webpage and the multimedia um, pages where you'll find a you'll find a link there. Um, our, there's Jordan busy at work in the classroom um, talking about stories as and talking about the connection to Mesa Verde. Um, making connections with young people is very important because um, some of the faces in there are Indigenous youth as well. And it was very exciting for some of those Indigenous youth to be able to see an Indigenous face being the presenter as well. And that was really powerful. Um, and then other, um, other um, students able to learn um, a different perspective as well. And then, of course, I talked about the Rock Your Mocks Day. Um, so that was fun in trying to get the right image in the right place to um, share our moccasins with the world and um, show our support for that event in Native American Heritage Month. And then, of course, Jordan and I, um, if you saw the post for the um, Rock Your Mock stand calling, you know, calling out our indigenous communities. Um, you just saw our feet, but that's how we really looked up there. <laughs> Um, and then finally, um, this is a photo of the storytelling workshop that we did over the summer. Um, you'll see Dave and, and Ian and Satchel and Jordan. Um, we did have um, a gentleman by the name of Yvonne Burbejo who came from Everglades over the summer to do a, a short detail with the park to help us with mentoring our Indigenous Rangers. And um, that was really a great opportunity as well for him to share and to participate in this event. So as you can see, it was pretty, um, it's been a pretty powerful um, event and for, for sharing our, um, you know, the different opportunities for these indigenous youth to really get involved and to share and to offer their insights. Um, and uh, I think it's really important to give Jordan an opportunity to share um, what he what he has endured and what he has thought of the summer as well. So um, Jordan, I'd like to give you the opportunity to share as well a little bit about your summer and why how you did how you did it, what you liked, you know, um, whatever you'd like to share, I'd like to give you that opportunity. Cool, cool. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, so a little bit like, I guess going kind of like backtracking a little bit. Um, before working uh, with Mesa Verde through the Indigenous Program, um, before that I did a lot of cultural preservation work here. Um, right out of high school, I started doing that. So I worked here for about three years in the Pueblo. Um, I worked specifically with the Tula Language Program and Tula being the language that we speak here at the base. Uh, worked as a, the teacher here, um, Tula language teacher. So I worked at the Pinasco and Indian, um, Indian school over at Santa Fe in 2012. And I did a lot of cultural preservation work through the Pueblo. And my focus was mostly on, like I said, like language. And most of my background knowledge came through like historical Pueblo and time period. So not as far back as ancestral Pueblo and sites like Mesa Verde. Uh, so when I came to Mesa Verde, it was very different. I was very much known to post contact and how the world shifted and what looked like US Pueblo people at that time frame. Um, but coming into it, I, I read a lot. I had to do that training, and uh, it was a lot, um, especially as a Pueblo person. I, and I know talking with uh, Ian and Sasha, especially, that uh, it was hard. It was hard to find ourselves connected to this place, and we all felt like where we were would be enough to talk about this place after doing our training and talking with each other. Um, and luckily enough, me, Ian, and Sasha all were roommates and we lived in the park together. And so there's a lot of evenings where we actually um, shared our own stories and our own perspectives on these places. Uh, myself coming from the Rio Grande region and, and Ian coming from the Zuni Pueblo and um, a Satchel coming from Hopi, you had a lot of different perspectives. But at the end of the day, I always called it our kumbaya moment. We were always like, yeah, see, it all makes sense, is what we always said. 
And um, those are the times I cherish a lot. And that's what helped drive, I think, all of our ambition to talk about this place the way we did. Um, when talking with the public and during tours or whatever, or even just the front desk, it's really easy to just talk about the architecture or talk about specific artifacts that we find there. But I think a lot of times we lose the uh, humanity in it all. And I think this through the indigenous internship program, we were able to tie that back, um, back into it all. Um, the stories, the people, the places, the smells, the sites that these, that Mesa Verde would have had back in the day. Um, so I was very grateful to kind of share my two cents on all of that. Um, but yeah, it was hard. Uh, it was hard to be there. And for a long time, the three of us joked that we're the last three Pueblo people to live up on the Mesa. And that was the biggest joke ever. Like, oh, we're just we're just here now. And we always called each other's uh, young elders all the time, too. And in our way that we talked about it and the way that we presented ourselves and the way that we had to um, show respect to the place. Um, as Cecilia mentioned, these places are powerful. Um, and myself, I led in two, uh, three groups from different Pueblo, um, um, modern day Pueblos, uh, Zia, Cochiti, and um, Laguna Pueblos. I, I led into different sites. Um, most of them were educational um, youth groups coming in. And it was really, really special to see see themselves, I guess, connected to this place too. Um, through that respect and through that power, we all kind of share with it. Um, so it was really, it was really fun. And I really cherished the time that I spent at Mesa Verde and um, especially with um, different visitor interactions too. Um, we always got the same questions all the times. And um, it was really different hearing from another ranger uh, in terms of shadowing. Um, I was always, the first week of training, I was, I asked the question. So what are the major questions we get um, asked? The two of them are, is uh, where's the bathroom and um, where do they bury their dead? Those are the two major questions that we got asked. And so I think from an indigenous perspective, being asked those two really, you know, out there questions, um, having our own perspective, I think that's really important and uh, really happy that I could have been part of it with Ian Sachin and David too. And, um, and that was my own experience with it all, but I'll be able to talk more here in a little bit because I could keep talking forever, um, but I could, uh, uh, shift it back to Cecilia now for a little bit longer. Thank you. Yes, these the the interns did um, bond together, and they really did have a connection um, with each other. And when I first um, worked with the group, and I was told that I would be working with them over the summer, I was really excited because. For me, it is such a special thing because when I started with the National Park Service, um, like many Pueblo people, we're, we're pretty shy and, you know, we're kind of keep to ourselves. But um, I I was um, given an opportunity to, to do a summer job at Bandelier and I always said it, it didn't end for many years because I really found that it was really important to do because you know, when we're when we're growing up and you're learning about different things, you learn about it not just for yourself, but for others around you, for your children that you may have and for your great grandchildren and the children that come after you for for generations ahead of you. And it, it didn't occur to me because I was, you know, just out of high school, just learning how to see if I wanted to be a ranger. Um, I didn't know I was going to, you know, have go on to have children. Um, and they might be interested in doing work and talking about National Park Service stuff and and um, and just paving that way and um, and also really because when I went to National Park Service sites or I went to other museums that, that were talking about our ancestors, I didn't see myself there. I didn't feel part of it. And um, that has always been something that I've strived to try to change. Um, so that when other Indigenous people come, no matter what age they are, they feel like they're welcome in these places, They that it is theirs and that they that our stories can be told through our eyes as well. Um, because, um, you know, we, we, we wonder and look at these places in awe as well at the workmanship of their, of the architecture, at just the, the st steady drawings on the pottery that they did. 
of you know all the the work that they did and just the knowledge that they had for knowing this how seasons changed um knowing um, and marking time using petroglyphs and whole structures themselves it, it's just really remarkable and um, through that storytelling workshop we did with our indigenous interns um, it was what came out of that was um, the indigenous interns deciding what their main theme was going to be what was their main goal they wanted um, for them for their group for the for the summer and what it was was they wanted to make sure that indigenous youth felt heard and felt connected to Mesa Verde National Park. Um, for So they are thinking about the future as well, um, even though they're young. As Jordan said, the young elders were thinking about their future. And I think that's a cool thing because they're paving that way. Um, and, and for me, this Indigenous Ranger program has so much more meaning as well, especially on a cultural level, because just to think about it, we have four indigenous rangers, four young men that came from very different areas. We had one from the Rio Grande Pueblos. We had one from Zuni. We had one from the Hopi Mesas and we had a Navajo join their group as well. And these young men work together to really make their programs, talk about these things, have these after hours conversations. And where I see them going in the future is they're going into leadership roles in their own, you know, whatever they decide to do. Who knows, Ian from Zuni may end up being governor one day. Jordan maybe end up doing some sort of leadership opportunity as well. Satchel may go on to great things. Davin will do the same, but they all remember their time at Mesa Verde and they'll remember that connection they have to each other. And when it comes time for them to serve their own people, they'll have those connections back to the to these um, this group they had over the summer of 2023. And I really look forward to the opportunity to see what the future holds for the Indigenous Ranger program, because it'd be great to even have more Indigenous Rangers come to have um, different communities represented, having different perspectives, to have um, some some of females come into and give their their insight into site into places, because who knows, we might see more about pottery, we might see more about um, different aspects that more of the female role would play in ancestral times. Um, so it'd be, it's, it's really exciting and really interesting. And I hope that the park will continue this program and that we can sustain it because it is, it is an important step in um, telling that indigenous story and letting the, the voices of the people tell their story um, and work alongside the, the, the park service rangers too, because it, it works hand in hand and they were really great um, sharing information and sharing things together you know they um the park service rangers you know worked and attended the indigenous ranger programs and they learned from them and on the opposite end the indigenous rangers went on the park service rangers tours and they learned from them so there's a great sharing of knowledge and skills and it was pretty profound and pretty incredible um, but our our visitors saw that as well um, and so I'm going to switch back over quickly to my PowerPoint presentation. Um, and just give me one second because I want to share with you a few. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going to get back on my PowerPoint here. Okay. I'd like to share with you some visitor comments that came from recreation.gov. And I'm just going to read a few. So this one is on Satchel. Satchel was a great tour guide. He was very respectful and concerned for our safety as well as the preservation of the site. I love that we had a Pueblo tribe member giving us his perspective of the cliff dwellings. We learned a lot. This was an experience of a lifetime. Well worth the money. Um, then we have another one. We toured the cliff palace with a wonderful ranger intern from the Pueblo Nation. It was an amazing and unforgettable experience which gave us, which gave us a deeper understanding of the culture past and present. The ranger poetically brought the culture to life while also fluently conveying his scientific knowledge. Fantastic. Then we've got the hike down and back is challenging, but well worth it. Our guide was Native American and absolutely fantastic. His perspective brought so much more to our experience. Then we have another. The Mesa Verde National Park and Cliff Palace tour was our second visit in 20 years and well worth the visit. 
we had a Navajo park ranger, David Nez, who was extremely knowledgeable and gave us insight into the ways of the ancients and his current people. Then I've got a little bit of a longer one. We had perfect weather for a one hour ranger led tour of Cliff Palace and enjoyed the entire experience immensely. But the most important part was our two ranger hosts. The first who did the pre-tour introduction was a young man of Pueblo in Rio Grande area of New Mexico, native origin. He was sensitive and knowledgeable, added in a touch of humor and prepped us well for the walk through the Cliff Palace. Ranger number two, who showed us his, showed us the actual place was originally from the US East Coast, second generation Eastern European background. He clearly had studied ancient Puebloan culture and helped us understand this magnific magnificent site far better than I anticipated. Thanks to these two, we gained much from our stay on Mesa Verde. We also visited Mesa Top Villages, the Museum Visitor Center, and enjoyed the spectacular overlooks and other cliff dwellings. A grand day, which had we the time, we could have made another two glorious days. Thanks. And let me end with our balcony house tour guy, Jordan, was great. We enjoyed the tour and the way he brought his own experience into the tour. Even my 14-year-old was impressed. Great tours, two very different guides, but each had a unique perspective. One native tour guide who shared traditions from his true life, one very experienced ranger who provided more factual insights and his thoughts into the sites you see. And then if visiting the palace, try to get your first tour there so you aren't, so others aren't in front of you. <laughs> and then finally, one more comment. Our tour at Balcony House exceeded our expectations. We had a young Navajo guy named David, who was an amazing guide who shared some of his language with us, his people's stories, and helped us to see how the ancestral Puebloan stories and ancestry is still alive in the indigenous people who called the Four Corners area home. Having a strong indigenous interpreter program at Mesa Verde is an amazing goal. Please keep expanding this program. It's really important. We also had fun climbing ladders, squeezing through tunnels and crevices, and imagining climbing hand and toe holes up walls with crops or materials on our backs. My teens loved it. So yes, our visitors definitely enjoyed, and these are just from recreation.gov. They also got numerous um, handwritten visitor comment forms that were submitted to park superintendent um, and emails that came in. So they had quite a fan club, which was pretty extraordinary. And um, it, it was a great experience and really something to just see. And I hope that our program will continue and we'll have indigenous pro um, rangers here this coming summer. So I'm excited to um, to offer that and see what new communities may be becoming. Maybe some of our interns that were here this past summer would be returning. And just to really continue this amazing program and really share um, with the public a different way of looking at the sites. Um, and just, you know, not, not only seeing the architecture, but also leaving, after leaving Mesa Verde, also remembering that our people are still here. So they're not just seeing it in the past tense, but see us and where they're still the present. And we can share about, you know, where, how we do things, what, what traditions we still have. They can hear the language that's spoken. Um, they can, uh, our visitors can have more of a, of a connection to place. And they, because I think one of the hardest things to do at some, at a park like Mesa Verde is make the connection between places like, like you're seeing here with the cliff dwellings to where we are in our modern communities. Um, because there's so much history and there's so much time in between that, in, in between that, um, between the late 1200s when people were leaving Mesa Verde to where we are in 2023. There's a lot of history there. And so um, many of our visitors come to Mesa Verde wanting all the answers. But what our Indigenous Ranger program does is really just give them another opportunity to see and to build their own imagination on how the people lived, as well as to meet some of our, the modern descendants of places like um, Spruce Tree House and Cliff Palace and um, acknowledge that we're still here and that we continue to preserve these places for those future generations who Jordan and I might never ever meet, but we know that we've done our part to protect this special place and to tell their stories and to also continue our own obligations to our cultural connections, um, even today in 2023 and as we move into 2024. Um, 
this is a, a really remarkable program and one that I hope to see continue to grow because, you know, like I say, our visitors have very different perspectives compared to indigenous peoples here in the in this area because, you know, not many visitors had the same response to corn that we do um, or, you know, some of the language, they might not have heard it before, um, but it's really cool um, with the Indigenous Ranger Program, our, some of our um, current Park Service staff, they know some Tiwa now, so they know how to um, say thank you, they know how to say good morning, they know some of our foods, and um, they know how to use those names, which is really exciting. They've also worked to um, come together. For example, um, some of our Park Service Rangers joined Jordan and Satchel, and they all went to Zuni to see Shalako a couple of weekends ago and participate with Ian and his family. So the, it still continues far beyond just the season. Um, and these friendships and these connections are, are continuing for sure. Um, I'm just gonna share a few more. I'm actually, I'm gonna see, um, Jordan, would you like to add anything in here as I stop my sharing? Um, as I see, our time is running. Yeah, I yeah. think you said something great. Um, yeah, like uh, like Cecilia was mentioning, like like what we're doing today, like what we're doing during our season continues on with our lives today. Like going to Shalako over like with Ian was a huge thing and, and inviting them over to this way probably in the next few weeks too as well and just keeping those communications going. Um, and it's really awesome to see that happening. Um, Connections I would never have if it wasn't for Mesa Verde, for sure. Um, I just know this. I just know home. And so it's really great to know that there's others out there that, and um, around this area and just sharing our own experiences with this place and how how we all interact with it and how we can continue it on with our voices, too. So like, like we were mentioning, too, like for the average day visitor that comes in and does a tour with us, most of the time they're not archaeologists, they're not... Um, architects they're not engineers they're not people who could really look at this place and find their own meaning to it a lot of times it's up to us as the interpreter to give the meaning and to, to show what's so important about these places and I think us as indigenous rangers through stories and through our own experiences it goes it goes really far with these visitors um like uh like I was mentioning to I think one of the rangers indigenous rangers I said in all honesty most people don't care about the dimensions of a room. Who cares really? Who cares on on what was in room 40 of this place? They wanna know the experiences that the people had here. And I think us as indigenous rangers can definitely do that. And I think um, listening to my other um, fellow indigenous rangers, we definitely paint that story well for them. And, and I was really grateful to learn from them as well and to you know, say my eloqua to, to Ian and all that too. And they took off and, and to share our own experiences. And like Cecilia was mentioning earlier too, going to sites and, and are having our own time with it was special. And um, as my grandpa always said, on being on bench, on ha, it, it stays with us. It goes with us in our hearts and our brains and under our arms, whether it be emotional knowledge or as a physical thing is kind of what it translates to. It goes with you. And for us, it went with us in all different ways and we can take it back to our own communities and learn from it. And so being here back at Picaris Pueblo, you know, telling all our people around here, stupid facts, like how corn can last 70 years and they're tired of me talking now here in the Pueblo. Um, but it's really great to be able to share those experiences, not only with the general public, but with our own indigenous communities too, as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for Jordan for sharing and for taking the time to join me today to share a little bit. Um, and I hope that I've given you an, um, a little bit of a good overview of what the program looks like, what it what it was and um, what we hope that it'll continue to be. And um, thank you as well um, to the foundation for allowing us to have this opportunity to to share with you. And um, it, it is definitely special and um, Thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you, Cecilia, and thank you, Jordan. This has been truly a gift. And Cecilia, I just want to thank you for 
leading this initiative, leading this program, and to what Jordan was saying, how you've inspired not only him, but the peers, all these park visitors. And I made note that in 2023, the Rangers had interaction in this program with 16,000 plus visitors that you're aware of. I mean, that's monumental, just the impact and that as Jordan had used previously the word humanity, that individual impact and collectively. So, I mean, I'm just awe-inspired and you're doing such great work to, like you had mentioned, not just this generation's, but the next to come, or as I like to say, the next seven generations. And thank you. I really think that um, people are wondering, how do I become an indigenous ranger? <laughs> you better be careful. You're going to get so many applications with this program. Uh, we have two questions in relation to that. Um, one is from Todd Bacon, who's um, on our board of directors. He has two questions, actually. First one being, how are the interns selected? So um, they they submit an application through the Ancestral Lands um, Corps. And um, through that process, they go through an interview process, reference checks, and um, they are selected similar to what we how we select our seasonal staff. So through interviews, references, and then a selection is made. Okay, and second part to the question, how is the program funded? Is the Mesa Verde Foundation involved? Um, yes, they they have been involved and they have um, submitted for grant opportunities through the National Park Foundation and um, and have been successful in that way. So I hope that that continues uh, because it is it is such an important um, opportunity because it not only brings um, indigenous youth who are already connected to their culture, it also brings other indigenous um, youth who are associated, um, who might have grown up maybe in a more of an urban environment and want to learn more about their communities. So it, it gives the opportunity for them to come together to to share and to learn knowledge, um, and and I think that's really powerful because it gives it, it really gives that opportunity for for um, for different groups of people to to share. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I can. Sure. And you go, Shannon. Um, I can add a little bit um, about funding. So this program actually was started because a visitor to the park was so impressed with the work that the park staff was doing um, around inclusive storytelling um, that that person made a donation to the museum association or the Mesa Verde Museum Association. Um, and the second um, season, so, so the first season was two um, interpretive rangers for a period of eight weeks. Um, the second year, um, Mesa Verde staff felt really passionately about growing that program. So the second year we had four indigenous um, in, ranger interns um, who stayed for 12 to 16 weeks, depending on um, the actual ranger. And that was actually funded through a grant from the National Park Foundation, shout out to the National Park Foundation, um, through a storytelling grant, um, which is really, uh, that that makes that storytelling workshop even more impressive, I think. So um, next year, we, we hope that uh, we will have funding to continue this program for many years to come. So the Mesa Verde Foundation is currently um, submitting lots of grant requests and, and asking lots of people. So we hope to see this program for many years to come. Yeah, the impact is exceptional. And, you know, just thank you so much for the good work you, Cecilia, you, Jordan, are doing and other park staff and the other rangers. We have a comment from Sophia Nicholson. This was so interesting. Thank you for sharing about this unique and incredible program. I hope other parks can model similar programs after yours. Thanks. This is from Park Superintendent Casey Cook Collins. Great presentation, Jordan and Cecilia, and thank you for a great season of connecting visitors with Mesa Verde's significance, past, present, and future. I too hope we can continue and expand this program. I second that. <laughs> 
Um, this one is from Ed Rob. What a fabulous program. Will it continue next year? I think we um, answered that, but ducktailing on Ed's question, Cecilia, will there be anything different or new with this coming year's program? Um, I think we're going to keep it going pretty much um, similar, but I think that um, I would like to um, have some indigenous, the rangers kind of coming together um, to do some demonstration type things. Because I know our indigenous rangers were really into the, the atlatl throwing, which they did a lot on their off time. And I think it'd be really cool to bring some of those back. Um, Jordan and Ian both weave. So I think them, so incorporating some of their, what they already are doing into some of those programming, I think would be something new that we would add. Um, and then probably um, doing some social media because I know a lot of them do social media as well. Wonderful. Um, this one is from Cassidy Jones. It's a truly exemplary model for the National Park Service. Thank you for sharing. Very nice. And we just have a few more minutes left. If anyone has any additional questions, comments, or praise, go right ahead. And Jordan, if you wouldn't mind closing it back up. So everything we do, we open, and everything we do, we close back. So when we're ready, just he'll take it. It looks like there was a question really early on um, during your presentation about uh, do other national parks have a similar program? Um, is that something you're aware of, Cecilia? I'm not aware of it, but I, I do know that there are other opportunities. Uh, or there's been some collaboration. Um, we, we did spend some time talking with like the Grand Canyon, some of their folks and some folks from, um, what was the other park, Jordan, do you remember? Um, and, and another park just talking to their indigenous um, park service rangers. So just to give their perspective and things like that. But I don't know if we, there's any that are doing this indigenous intern program. Oh, we have just a couple comments and then we'll pass it to you, Jordan, to close the program. Uh, one is from Josh Nelson, Canyonlands National Park. Thank you, Cecilia and Jordan, for sharing. It is great to hear more about the program. We have one from Antoine. It was an honor to work with these four young elders this summer. Looking forward to next year. Charles Stearns, awesome job. And um, Jordan, why don't you... Uh, Close the program for us, please. Cool, yeah, for sure. And then to uh, Ranger Tony uh, McWitch, by the way. Um, all right, so closing up. We went to Wichita, Mama Macho, and Taiwan, and Chupa Hunter, and Wichita, and Galeria, Patahe, Bonhe, Chahe, 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 well, thank you for that, Jordan. Um, just a quick thank you again to everyone for joining us and to Jordan and Cecilia and Monica for um, a fabulous webinar. Um, we hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season um, and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. <laughs>